Hi everybody, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers and I'm really delighted to be talking to Sarah Curtis today who's the director at Harry King and Sons. Hello Sarah, lovely to meet you. Hello, hello. Um, so first of all Sarah, tell us a bit, <laughs> oh, we, we love an unexpected <laughs> entrance, <laughs> that's all right, no problem at all. Um, tell us a bit about what Harry King and Sons does. Um, so we're a small family basically a family run um, business. Um, so the business is, was set up in 1850. Wow. Um, so it was uh, as a as a boat yard, sort of repair yard. Um, okay. And then so they were set up by uh, George Garrard and George then took on um, lots of apprentices, local apprentices. One oh, of those wow. local boys was Harry King. Um, and then when George died in 1898, Harry took on the business. So Harry King's has effectively only been running since 1898. Um, and then it, it was passed down to Harry's children, Norman and Sam, and passed down to Sam's son, Jeff King. And then we, we, we've taken over from Jeff when he retired. Jeff is now 81. Wow, um, so Jeff history. being Harry King's grandson, yes. Um, so we're, we're essentially um, a boatyard that we, we store around 170 boats of various sizes from Gosh. small sort of day boats, 16 foot long day boats up to 40 foot yachts, um, wooden boats, uh, fiberglass boats and uh, we've got a couple of metal boats as well. Predominantly sailing boats, but we do have a few yeah. motor boats as well. Um, so that's sort of in the winter. They're laid up and stored with us in the yard over the winter. Um, we carry out repair works, maintenance work, and then the summer months um, we'll, we'll have larger restoration jobs that are sort of might might go on for a year, two years. At the moment, we've got a small boat that's sort of a bit of a five year project mainly so the owners can spread the cost. So we do a bit e each summer. Um, and then of course there's general yard maintenance as well. Um, and oh. then we also have about a hundred and, well, uh, we do have 105 swinging moorings on the river. So um, when the boats are not stored with us over the winter, we launch them and put them on their swinging moorings for the summer. So those moorings, are, uh, again, have, they have to be lifted and serviced by us as well. So. That oh sort my of gosh! Keeps us busy in the winter. That is so. Um, I had no idea that that was such a complicated um process, and that actually involved all those different layers of sort of support. Would you tell us a bit about the different sorts of jobs that people do at Harry King's? Yep. Uh, so we have so the business itself only employs uh, four people. One of those is uh, Tom. We call him Yard Tom because we also have a son, Tom. <laughs> um, so Tom is doing a four year boat building apprenticeship, um, wow. which is due to end next month. Um, so he him and uh, Mick, uh, we've got Mick who's um, slightly older, 58, um, and they do general general so Tom will do some shipwright work but they spend most of their time doing general yard maintenance so their job is moving the boats around so we have a tractor and we have a JCB so they wow. both had to learn how to drive the tractors and the JCB and um, we put them in for uh, on-site tests for both those equipments um, so they move the boats around the yard they take them down to the public card where we launch them. So they also work afloat on our motorboats, uh, take the boats off to the moorings. Um, so we have shipwrights here as well. So they'll do a range of work from traditional boat building work through to painting, varnishing, fiberglass repairs, gel coat repairs, paint spraying, um, fitting uh, interiors, decking, um, we've also got riggers on site to do all the sailing rigs. Uh, sail makers will come on site as well to measure up for not just sails for boats, but covers to go on boats as well and hatch covers, etc. Um, we have two marine engineers on site. One will mainly focus on inboard engines, so the larger uh, engines inside the boats and then the other chap deals with um, the outboard engine so the smaller engines that go 
mainly on the back of dinghies, but also go on the back of smaller yachts as well. Um, and up until very recently, although unfortunately he's just retired, we had a metalwork fabricator as well. Did amazing sort of stainless steel, bespoke stainless steel work, um, sort of fancy bits to go on on yachts. Um, so we've taken on board that his 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 unit. So we we do do metal fabrication and welding as well ourselves. So the breadth of that is quite a just range of huge, skills. Yes, and yeah. they seem to me to be individually very specialist. Because I'm guessing, and I need you to talk me through that what a rigger does is perhaps very different from what a sailmaker does. Yes, yeah. So yeah, they're all essentially for the for the same thing. You know, this one boat. But uh, yes, I mean, unlike a car. A boat seems to need a a, a much wider skill set, really. Yes, yeah. Oh, so okay. so our our rigger on site, um, we all have to work fairly closely because he mm. we he needs to know when we're going to take the masts down on the boat so he can measure up to make all the new wire splicing rigging um, right. that's required for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. They are very very individual skills and, yes and yeah. it seems to me that that must take quite a lot of coordination from somebody to bring that together whose job is that to make sure that all happens that's my job <laughs> wow that sounds that's like a real feat of organization in terms of getting that done uh, with all those different aspects with the boat building apprenticeship that's so interesting that tom's done that your yeah, tom and um, that tom's uh, that tom's done that uh, what sort of what sort of things do you do with people like who are training to be boat builders because i'm guessing that probably where he started in year one is really different to where he's ended up in year four yes yeah like all apprentices um the first year they feel like a fish out of water um i feel i felt very sorry for tom um and any new person that comes in and does work experience it, you know it is a complete uh, alien environment even if you're used to sailing which actually tom was his father has a has a boat and he has been sailing a few you know a bit um but yeah it's a complete alien environment and uh, full of very scary grumpy men <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so his his first year was was very much well his first two years really like everybody that um first you know you, you you've got to learn the learn the ropes um so he was doing a lot of yeah following following and watching and copying yeah, yeah. but he's now turned into and also you watched them grow over four years so you know he's no longer this young lad he's a he's a young man now um so you watch them grow over four years and he's really built up in confidence and built his skills and he's a very useful member really quite an important member of our team yeah oh that's fantastic to hear about his journey what sort of um uh, you know sort of thinking about like an like an average tom day what uh, what sort of things might he do on a normal day what would his day actually look like uh so every day is different every day of the year is different um we work very, you know, it's very seasonal, obviously, you know, explain, you know, boats coming in at the winter and they spend a lot of their time in the summer afloat. Um, but uh, Tom's Tom's day today was um, so we're getting ready for getting all the boats in for the winter. So actually he's up in our top yard. We have three, three yards, front yard, middle yard, top yard. He's up in the top yard. Um, uh, hedge cutting, right? <laughs> um, which is a hedge cutter on our, you know, he's not doing it by hand, is a hedge cutter on on our back of our tractor. Um, so he's, he's moving boats, cutting hedges, moving boats that didn't go afloat, because there are some boats always in all yards that didn't manage to go afloat. Um, it's moving bar boats, cutting hedges, um, tidying up the yard and getting stuff ready. Um, but so, but last week he was redecking our mooring barge. So we've also got our mooring barge is a float, is ashore at the moment, and we're doing maintenance work on that, ready for servicing our moorings in the winter. So last week, yeah, he was putting new deck on the mooring barge. Um, 
yesterday uh, we had to get a boat in from the uh, from the river that had to come in ashore because it was having engine problems so um, he was sorting out trailers and getting getting the boats in for that um, what else was he doing last week he was did some gel coat repairs on a dinghy that had um, a customer had damaged it whilst uh, going <laughs> They knocked it onto onto a, a pontoon, and so they just damaged that, that that. So you had to repair that. Um, so varied, isn't it? Very varied. Job. Every day is different. Yeah. Oh, for, guess, for, uh, for all of us, every day is different. I'm sure that's the case. It must be. It must be so different, like you say, so seasonal as well as probably you know what what comes in customer wise in terms yes. of what they need. Yeah. I was sort of also wondering. I guess the format of the work itself is obviously very outdoorsy in all weathers. So you've got to be able yes. to cope with going out in the winter, working outdoors. Yeah. Um, but it sounds to me like the variety in terms of what you do and probably that you work in that kind of actually quite a close-knit team in, in, yes, in a way yeah, too. Yeah. I just sort of wonder as well as those I'm, I'm guessing probably when you're recruiting people you're looking for people that have got sort of practical skills um, but what else are you looking for what sort of qualities sort of make you think yes they you know they would be a good member of our team when you're employing people? Uh, yeah well so you said we need to be a close-knit team we do you know in the, especially in the winter if they're um, afloat servicing moorings we you can't always um, communicate through speaking oh, yeah. because there's engines running um, so they every they build up a sort of very quick kind of um, sign language form of communicating Fascinating. Uh, and you do have to work really closely together and you have to know that you, you are relying on each other. So if someone's in the tractor pushing a boat um, down the hard, they can't they can't see in every direction. So we've got somebody like a banksman um, either side and they are very much their eyes and ears. So we're looking for somebody that that we know that we can work with. Um, uh, so they don't have to come. We're not looking for set skills. Uh, if they've got skills to bring, that's great. But if you're a young person, we're not expecting any skills. Um, and we know that you, you know, you learn from watching. So, you know, it b build up their skills so quickly. But it's it's mainly to we to, to think that, yes, you are going to be able to work together. Um, they're able to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, we need somebody that's uh, reliable. Um, we'll turn up on time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, and until until you until you take somebody on, you can't. It's very difficult to tell from a half hour or an hour interview how that's going to work. So we always invite somebody maybe to come and work with us for a day or a week. Um, pay, you know, obviously paid <laughs> um, for them, but also as a two way thing, they've got to work out whether it's something that's going to work for them. Um, as you know, in the summer, you come down, you think, oh, wow, you know, your job's so easy <laughs> and oh, it's so nice and you're in the sun and, and it's lovely. Uh, but then, yes, there's the winter when it isn't so lovely and you have to remind yourself when it is so lovely in the summer. Um, but yeah, so you you don't you you don't know, you know you've got you've got to over a period of time you both both us and and the employee you've got to work out whether it's it's going to work. So we always do a a three month sort of probational period, and then we have a chat at, at the end of that, and then and then it, it it's extended to another three months. That's so helpful to um, to sort of understand the kind of things that you're looking for, because it seems to me that the job is actually very in depth and so much beyond kind of, you know, what you might imagine, like, you know, fix, fixing up a boat in terms of and how technical that that probably is yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and you'll, you'll never learn, you know, even moving boats around the yard, it will take, you know, it takes two years to confidently you know, I mean, as you, if you come as a 17, 18 year old, suddenly jump in a tractor and, and move a boat in a trailer that's maybe worth 20, 30, 40,000, you know, you don't, yeah. you're not doing that lightly. So, yes, it, it takes 
a, a long time to feel confident to to do that so yeah we don't expect anyone to do it on day <laughs> one <laughs> and so Sarah how long have you been working in the industry for uh so I I grew up here um wow. so my my uh father was a boat builder my stepfather was a boat builder and I'm married to a boat builder <laughs> <laughs> and our son is now a boat builder <laughs> um but we've been so my husband has been working in this yard since 1988 um i i used to be a school teacher and then when my husband gus said if we ever had an opportunity of taking over the boat yard would i run it with him so i said yes of course um so that that start, started in 2005 august 2005 so 17 gosh. years wow oh my gosh that's so interesting to sort of hear about your Sort of career journey there as well from teacher to you know working in in a boatyard we've sort of asked everybody this sarah at the end of our talks and that is if you could go back and give your younger self you know leaving school one piece of careers advice what would you what piece of advice would you give yourself do you think oh goodness um i don't know i've often thought about that i think most people's lives slightly accidental aren't they yeah um but if it's a happy accident then i don't know that you you need to dwell on what you haven't done and what could have been um you know i think young people leave school and think or even at, when they're choosing their gcse's at 14 they're thinking well this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life and life doesn't work out like that you know, and and hopefully it doesn't work out like that you know you've got a long life to to learn all these new skills and i think you need to learn something new every day of your life and if you're if you're in a job that you think you're not learning new skills and and you're not happy there then you find something else and i don't think you have to decide at 14 15 16 what it is you're going to do so um i've been very lucky i've been very happy with all the things i've done and you pick up all these skills along the way that you then use in your later career so um i, I don't know that i would go back and change anything I, I think that's i think that's really good uh, i think that's really good advice in itself isn't it that actually that sense that um you know to take the opportunities that come up and don't yeah. panic if you don't know yeah. exactly what yeah. it is that you want Absolutely. to do and, and and nothing is a waste of time you know you think oh well i don't know what i'm going to do or I'll, I'll work in the co-op for a bit because i don't know what else to do for a bit that's not a waste of time you're learning your skills there that are there for life you know nothing's a waste of time you know and you will eventually get to your your happy accident <laughs> um you know unless you've got unless you're set i mean you know i wanted to become a teacher so you obviously have to follow you know i had to get my degree and my, my postgraduate in order to to teach and i did that for 10 years and i loved loved it and i miss it um but um but but it's given me lifelong skills that I use every day now. So, you know. Uh, I think that's great. And I love that idea of sort of seeing your life as an, an accumulation of skills as you move through doing different things. And I totally agree that nothing that you do is a waste. And sometimes if yeah. you don't know what to do, just start something. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. See where you yeah. need. Exactly. But, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. It's just been lovely to talk to you. Thank you. No, no problem.